So I've got a wild caught black rat snake that uh, it was in somebody's <laughs> it was in somebody's hen house eating their chicken eggs. And uh, I'm gonna reach in. I want to show you this. I'm gonna reach in without looking. Remember, it's a wild caught snake. It's not gonna bite me. And uh, I kind of want to just dispel some of the things that people believe about snakes. So this is a black rat snake. This one's I would guess about five feet long. And uh, we'll give you some close-ups. When they're, when they're young, they really look nothing like this. They have a more of a mottled gray pattern. And as they get older, they get darker. And uh, I've seen full-grown ones. You see down here, this is completely black down here. But he does have a really nice pattern when you get close. All right, these are actually good to have around. They eat mice, they eat rats. A couple things about them. Uh, see if I can first I'm gonna let him s smell me now they smell with their tongue and uh, I don't usually restrain him or any snake for that matter so what I'm gonna do is see if I can get him calm down here and actually the best way to get him calm down is just let him hang loose there we go he feels secure uh, people say why isn't he biting you he has no reason to bite me whatsoever I'm not food now I'm a tree all right, when I'm handling him and he's moving around, he doesn't feel stable. So that's why he's, you know, wiggling around and things like that. So I'm going to lift him up and actually I'm going to pet him under the neck. He see, that seems to, it works on a lot of snakes, by the way. I don't know if they like it, but they, they sort of sit there. So I'm going to let him smell my hand. You see that tongue flickering in and out. And the way to picture that is like a dog who smells the air or a sniffing to identify things. And that's all he's doing. Uh, what a lot of people don't realize is snakes, far more than being predators, usually end up being prey. Uh, this snake could be five foot long, but you realize it's only this tall. So when somebody walks up to it, I mean, you know, the shoes up here and they're constantly being tried to get, you know, eaten by other animals. But that tongue helps identify. He knows I'm not food, and he's just smelling. He has no fear. He has no reason to fear me. Uh, I'm not hurting him. I'm not restraining him. I'm just letting him crawl. So I'm going to give you a close-up of that. See if I can just get him to relax, and I'll see how close we can get with that. Let's see if I get that tongue to come out again. And he's not wanting to do that. Let's try one more time. There's the tongue. By the way, I want you to notice I'm tapping him on the nose. He's not biting me. In fact, let's take it a little bit farther. Let me just get him up on my shoulder. I'm actually, you know, who would, who would like this? Somebody bumping him in the face. You notice he's not trying to bite me. He's not trying to hurt me. Snakes don't chase after people. And by the way, people say, well, I had a snake chase after me. And I can tell you this from personal experience. When I was younger, my brother and I had two little garter snakes in the backyard. And they were in a container. The container spilled. Both snakes went out. And my grandmother swore that those snakes chased her all the way to the house. And she slammed the door just in time so they didn't get here. So a lot of times people just have this fear, uh, this irrational fear, and they, you know, they, or the snake is coming towards them, but it's not chasing them, it's just trying to get away. Uh, when I was in Kenya, people would say, I would get snakes. And, uh, you know, over there they're walking, so it's a lot more than just getting in your car and driving somewhere. And I never wanted to go like several miles for nothing. So I'd always say, how big is the snake? And they'd, they'd go like this on their arm, meaning that big around. Uh, what color is it? It's black. And majority of the times it was about as big as around as this finger and it was green. But again, people have this irrational fear and everything, you know, everything's a big dangerous snake that's going to chase you. Um, so there's that. If you look at his eyes, if you notice he has no eyelids and you could actually touch that eye. Let me do that. You can actually touch the eye. It doesn't hurt the snake. He has a hard cap over that eye to protect him so he doesn't blink. Uh, a few other things. Snakes are deaf. 
Snakes cannot hear anything. They hear, quote, by picking up vibrations uh, with their body on the ground, and then they also uh, use that tongue to smell again. So that's how they kind of identify danger and things of that nature. But uh, again, you notice he's not trying to get me, not trying to bite me. If you notice he's rapping and it's like, oh no, he's gonna wrap around me, he's gonna kill me. Here's why he's rapping, because he does not feel secure. All right, you see how, how he's moving around? It, it would be like somebody manhandling you and kind of throwing you in there, holding you up in the air. But watch when I put him around my neck and he calms right down because he feels secure. I'm nothing more than a tree right now. He can explore. He's not being restrained. Uh, when people catch snakes, sometimes they grab them by the neck. And the illustration I use with that, if somebody came up behind you and grabbed you by the neck and forced you, you would resist. But if they maybe put their hand on your shoulder and just kind of led you, you would go because there's no threat. You're not being forced into it. He's not being forced into anything. All right, I'm gonna put him down on the ground and uh, I want you to watch. He's not gonna chase me. He's not gonna chase my photographer, which is my wife. And I'm just gonna put him down and I'm gonna let him kind of crawl around a little, a little bit. Get the bag out of here. And you see that tongue constantly flickering in and out. All right. Now he's going, he's going towards my wife. All right, let me just show you something. You notice he's not striking my foot. Oh, you say he quailed. He didn't quail. He's just scared because I'm touching his nose, so he's backing up. I'm going to pick him up. No restraint. Put him on my arms, and you see how tame he is. By the way, the vast majority of black snakes I've ever caught, I've just picked up. I have never, ever restrained them or grabbed them by the neck or anything of that nature. So they get a bad rap. Um, People say, well, snakes are snakes are of the devil, all right? Well, one, that's not anywhere in the Bible. Uh, but I will tell you this, and this may surprise you, while Satan is called a serpent, there's also a verse in John 3, 14 that makes a serpent a type of Christ, which is, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. So they are not the evil, menacing, snake hater or people haters that people make out most of that fear either comes from a bad experience where somebody threw some snake on you or you you step too close and it startled you or the biggest is hollywood and even the news you know a dog can bite somebody in the next town over and you're, you're lucky to hear about it a snake can bite somebody in california and it makes front page news here so hollywood the media really have hurt these guys as far as giving them a bad rap. They're good to have around. What people don't understand is if we actually got rid of all our snakes, uh, we would starve to death because rats and mice would take over. So these are great, great mouse eaters. All right, give you one last shot here. Again, he's not striking the photographer. He is not striking the camera. He's just trying to see what's in front of him right there. And there he comes. So there you go, black rat snake. And uh, hope you enjoyed that little video. Don't kill him. Just let him go. Or call me and I'll come get him. All right. Thanks so much for watching.